after all the other heavy hitters. Now I'm going to beat myself up with utmost. <laughs> oh boy, I'm looking so forward to this. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm, yeah, there's some days I'm just so amazed. I, I sit back and I think, you know, what got into God? <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, you know, are you really, you know, that direct? <laughs> and I'm just, is anybody going to believe this? <laughs> they think, think I planned this or something, you know? They're all kind of like, you know, if anybody watches all eight of these devotionals, you know, they'd be dumbfounded or amazed to think that, you know, they're not planned out or they're, they're designed in some way <laughs> because they come from all different times, places, ages, people, perspectives, denominations, and yet, zoom, man, you know, when it comes to just, let's be the potter and the clay, you know, and make a vase, <laughs> or let's start over. I think that's why I love them, you know, is that in doing emotional, I knew that this would be my opportunity to get back into reading them every day. And in the old days, it used to be so simple. Now, it took an act of God, or maybe an act of the internet, <laughs> to cause me to pursue what I should have been doing regularly anyways. So that's why your help, for me, is why I do this. Because you help me to read these and they are most definitely spoken to me first. No offense to you. And then if you get something out of them, hey, <laughs> that's between you and God. <laughs> I don't have anything to do with it. I didn't do it. That's you and you, you know, you and your God, or you and the Holy Spirit, or you and our God. Or that's our Father. You know, He's got it all under control. <laughs> Even me. <sighs> the overshadowing personal deliverance. I am with you to deliver you, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 1.8 God promised Jeremiah that he would deliver him personally. Thy life will I give unto thee for a prey. That is all God promises his children. Wherever God sends us, he will guard our lives. Our personal property and possessions are a matter of indifference to him. We have to sit loosely to all those things if we do not, there will be a panic and heartbreak and distress when God takes us on without them. That is the inwardness of the overshadowing of personal deliverance. The Sermon on the Mount indicates that we are on Jesus Christ's errands, who our lives are not our own. There is no time to stand up for ourselves. We don't exert our own personal freedom or liberty. Jesus says, in effect, do not be bothered with whether you are being justly dealt with or not. Do not assert yourself for your rights. <laughs> May I say that again to this modern generation. You are not in control of your life. You do not have the freedom and the liberty to pursue happiness. The Sermon on the Mount says, Do not be bothered with whether you are being justly dealt with or not. To look for justice is a sign of deflection from devotion to Jesus. Never look for injustice in this world, but never cease to give it. Injustices are everywhere, but justice will only come from you. If we look for justice, we will begin to grouse about and become bitter and become advocates to indulge in the discontent of self-pity. Oh, I have a righteous cause. Why should I be treated like this? If we are devoted to Jesus Christ, we have nothing to do with what we meet, whether it is just or unjust. Jesus says simply, go steadily on with what I have told you to do, and I will guard your life. Do not get involved in the side issues. Do not be distracted with what attracts you for some righteous cause. I am sending you. I will direct you. I will guard you. If you try to guard it yourself, 
your life, your possessions, your worries, your cares, you remove yourself from my deliverance. I cannot deliver you with you in the way. The most devout among us become atheistic in this condition and this connection. We do not believe God. We enthrone common sense and tack the name of God onto it and claim that it is our social responsibility. It is our individual personality trait that needs to be reckoned with. It is something that we, outside of God, have to do. We do not lean to our own understanding instead of trusting God with all of our hearts. And that is the reality of whether you are bluntly a Christian or not. You may be exercising the Christian religion, and many do. The Christian religion is one of great potential to make a nation like America, or to make a devastation like what happened to all the other Christian nations that were the Roman Empire when they failed to follow God in what he told them to do, and they chose instead to do what they thought was right and create a religion out of what was meant to be a relationship. And what they did with that was they destroyed the Roman Empire. They declared that politics was the preferential treatment of religion, and that religious must be in politics, rather than religion must be of the heart and not of the outward manifestation. And if you look at today, it's still the same. People will choose every other way to go except for this one principle Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount. I am your Lord. Why do you not do the things I tell you to do? Jesus said at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, because a lot of people like to say the Sermon on the Mount is just some idealism. It's just some theme. It's just something we have to look at as a far-fetched idea, some concept, some religious, you know, you can take it or leave it. Jesus said at the very end of it, Blessed is the one that does, does these sayings of mine, for I will liken unto him that build his house upon a rock. And the storms came, and the rains fell, and nothing could tear that house down. But he said, I will liken those who do not do these sayings of mine. He built his house upon a sand. And when the storms came, and they did, and when the winds blew, and they did, his house was destroyed, and how great was the destruction thereof. The reality of the Sermon on the Mount isn't a theme. It isn't meant to be sidled off to the side and interpreted as though you can't do it. It isn't meant to be explained away as though Jesus wasn't serious enough to say that, hey, if your eye is causing you to sin, pluck it out. Oh, that's only symbolic. No. Jesus dealt with the reality of life and eternity, saying to you and me, if you want to live forever, you need to treat your life seriously. You need to understand God is serious about sin. And why did he say blessed? Because it's so easy. You would be shocked to just simply do and commit the one thing he said to do. Just ask him. He'll tell you. He says, ask me. Take my yoke upon me. My burden is easy. My yoke is light. I'll give it to you. You can carry it. You may have to deny yourself. You may have to take up your cross. But when you follow me, and you ask me what to do, I will walk each step with you. Every day that you step, I will step with you. And you know, isn't that what a Christian is? Isn't that what someone following Jesus is supposed to do? Follow Jesus.